Not so long ago, a small but elite group of heroes used their special powers to stop villainous plots and protect innocent citizens from harm. They were the Supers. Among them were Frozone, Gazer Beam, and Elastigirl. But one of the Supers stood out from the rest. His name was Mr. Incredible. He was the best known, most popular hero in the city, and he always insisted on working alone. One day Buddy, Mr. Incredibles's number one fan, showed up at a bank robbery wearing a pair of rocket boots to help him fly. Mr. Incredible simply said, fly home, Buddy. I work alone. But Buddy didn't listen. Mr. Incredible managed to save Buddy from a bomb, but a bank robber escaped, some train tracks were destroyed, and a few people were hurt. It was after that day that the Supers lives. Changed forever. People started to think Supers did more harm than good. The government decided that Supers should no longer be allowed to use their powers. So Mr. Incredible and his new bride, Elastigirl, became known as Bob and Helen Parr to the rest of the world. Years passed and the Parrs had three children. They tried to live as an ordinary family. But their two oldest children, Violet and Dash, had superpowers. Only the baby, Jack-Jack, seemed normal. Like their parents, the kids weren't allowed to use their powers in public. Home was different. Dash used his super speed to annoy Vi, who would become invisible and fight back with force fields. Their parents had to use their superpowers to break up the fights. Ordinary life was hard for everyone, especially Bob. Bob missed being a super. So he and his friend Lucius, the former Frozone, began to fight crime and help people in secret. One night as the two friends were rescuing people from a burning building, someone was watching them. A mysterious woman named Mirage followed Bob and Lucius and then told her boss about them. Mr. Incredible was just the person Mirage and her boss had been looking for. The next day, Bob was fired from his normal job after a particularly rough day with his boss. When Bob came home, he found a small computer in his briefcase the screen lit up. Hello. Mr. Incredible, Mirage said. I represent a top secret division of the government. And we have need of your unique abilities. She said they needed Bob's help to stop an out-of-control experimental robot. Mirage offered to pay him three times more than his current normal job paid. The supers aren't gone, Mr. Incredible. You're still here, she finished. Then her message self-destructed. Bob accepted this secret hero mission. He decided not to tell his family he had been fired. Again. Instead, he told them he was going on a business trip. Within hours, Mr. Incredible was aboard a fancy jet heading for the island of Nomanasan. He listened carefully as Mirage described the mission. The Mnidroid 9000 is a top secret, battle prototype robot, she explained. We lost control and now it's loose in the jungle, threatening our facility. She warned him that the robot would quickly learn his moves because it was a learning robot. The hero was to defeat the expensive invention without destroying it. Shut it down. Do it quickly. Don't destroy it. Mr. Incredible summed it up. Mr. Incredible was thrilled he felt like a new man. Back at home, he had a new routine. Each day, he pretended to go to work, but instead Mr. Incredible exercised. Soon he was as fit and as strong as his old super self. He even had a new super suit made by Edna Mode, former designer for the supers. When Mirage called. Again, Mr. Incredible was ready for another secret mission. Following her instructions, he flew back to the island of Nomanasan. Little did he know he was headed for big trouble. Once again, he battled an Omnidroid. But this Omnidroid was much faster and stronger and smarter. It anticipated all of Mr. Incredible's moves. The Omnidroid caught Mr. Incredible. Suddenly Mr. Incredible heard a wild laugh. It's bigger. It's badder. It's finally ready, yelled a wild-haired man who jetted down to face the captured Super Buddy? Asked Mr. Incredible. My name is not Buddy. And it's not Incrediboy, either, shrieked the bitter, grown-up Buddy, all wanted to do was help you. But I learned an important lesson, you can't count on anyone. Now I have a weapon that only I can defeat, he added, laughing evilly. I'm Syndrome. Syndrome tossed Mr. Incredible over a cliff, and he landed in the river below. Then Syndrome tossed a bomb into the water to get rid of the super for good. But Mr. Incredible found safety in an underwater cave. Inside the cave, he discovered the skeleton of his. Unlucky super friend Gazerbeam lucky for Mr. Incredible, though, the skeleton not only offered a place to hide and trick Syndrome's probe, but Gazerbeam had also carved the word Kronos into the cave wall before he died. Mr. Incredible escaped from the cave and then found his way to Syndrome's headquarters and main computer. When Mr. Incredible typed in Kronos, Syndrome's plan appeared. 
there was a long list of supers and most of them were listed as terminated. It quickly became clear that Syndrome had been killing off supers by using them to train his Omnidroid. Now that the evil robot was perfected, Syndrome was going to launch it on the city. Suddenly Mr. Incredible's suit started beeping. Mr. Incredible didn't know why, but he did know it was time to run from Syndrome's guards. However, Mr. Incredible never had a chance as a bunch of sticky globs surrounded and captured him. The beeping was a homing device that had been sewn into Mr. Incredible's super suit. Helen had activated it when she met with Edna Mode, who had also made super suits for the rest of the Parr family. Helen decided to go and find Bob. Unfortunately, when Helen tried to tell Vi to take care of her brothers while she was gone, Dash found the kids' new super suits. He raced around in his super speedy suit, and Vi learned that her suit turned invisible when she did. Hey, both of you. Knock it off. Helen cried. Soon Elastigirl had everything under control and was aboard a jet on the way to Nomanasan. But as the jet neared the island, Elastigirl discovered Violet and Dash on board. They quickly blamed each other for stowing away. You left Jack-Jack alone? Elastigirl cried. Of course we got a sitter. Do you think I'm totally irresponsible? Asked Vi. Elastigirl phoned the sitter, but the call was cut short. The jet was under attack. After watching from headquarters, Mirage announced, Target was destroyed. Mr. Incredible knew his family was on the jet and was devastated. Syndrome sneered, you'll get over it. I seem to recall that you prefer to work alone. But Syndrome had underestimated Elastigirl. She had made herself into a parachute and landed with the children safely in the ocean. Then Elastigirl had shaped herself into a boat. Using Dash's super-fast legs as a motor, the super family raced towards the island to rescue Mr. Incredible. When they made it to shore, Elastigirl found a cave where Vi and Dash could hide. Elastigirl handed the chill. Dren masks and said, put these on. If anything goes wrong, use your powers. Then Elastigirl left to break into Syndrome's headquarters and rescue her husband. Soon after, Vi and Dash were forced out of the cave by a giant fireball. It turned out to be the rocket exhaust. From Syndrome's base. Dash and Vi watched as the Omnidroid rocketed into the night sky and headed towards the city. The next morning, Dash spotted what he thought was a talking bird. It was one of Syndrome's security alerts. Suddenly Vi and Dash were surrounded by guards. Remember what mom said, Violet whispered. Run. Vi turned invisible and Dash ran. They used their powers well. Meanwhile, Elastigirl found Mr. Incredible with Mirage and gave her a swift punch. He tried to explain that Mirage had switched sides and was helping him to escape, but there was no time. Mirage announced that guards had been sent after Vi and Dash. Quickly Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl raced to rescue their children. Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl reached the jungle. Suddenly a big round force field rolled through the trees with Violet and Dash inside. Mom! Dad! yelled Violet. Their reunion was cut short as Syndrome's guards surrounded them. Working together, the Incredibles made an incredible team. But they were on Syndrome's turf. Soon the villain caught them in his Amobi Ray. Back at his headquarters, Syndrome told the captive family his plans. He had already sent the Omnidroid to the city. The robot will emerge dramatically, do some damage, and just when all hope is lost, Syndrome will save the day. I'll be a bigger hero than you ever were. Then Syndrome left to save the city, leaving the Incredible behind. Meanwhile, the Omnidroid was already ripping through the city. The people were terrified. Just when it looked as if no one could stop the gigantic robot, Syndrome arrived to save the day. Stand back. He shouted. He secretly used his remote control, and the Omnidroid's arm fell off. The crowd went wild, cheering for Syndrome. His plan was working. Syndrome looked like a hero. But Syndrome had made a huge mistake. Because the robot was a learning robot, it quickly learned that the remote control was controlling it. The Omnidroid blasted the remote from Syndrome's wrist, knocking him out. Now the robot was truly out of control. But Vi had used her powers to free her family. Dot. And now the Incredibles were racing back to the city on one of Syndrome's rockets. When they arrived Mr. Incredible told his family he was going after the Omnidroid alone. At first, Elastigirl was upset, but then. Bob blurted out, I can't lose you again. I'm not strong enough. Surprised and touched by her husband's feelings, Elastigirl replied gently, if we work together, you won't have to be. 
so the incredible family combined their superpowers once again. With help from their friend Frozone, they were able to trick the Omnidroid. Mr. Incredible grabbed one of its detached arms and pointed it at the robot. Elastigirl pushed the correct button on the remote, and the arm rocketed into the robot. The Omnidroid fell over and exploded. The Supers had won. They had destroyed the Omnidroid. The crowd cheered. But the Incredible family's problems weren't over. Syndrome wanted revenge. When the PARS arrived home, they found Syndrome kidnapping Jack-Jack. The Incredible family sprang into action, as Syndrome blasted up to his jet. Fortunately, it turned out that Jack-Jack had powers. He turned into a monster. Frightened, Syndrome dropped the baby in mid-air. Mr. Incredible threw Elastigirl, who quickly caught Jack-Jack. Then she turned herself into a parachute, and mother and son floated down. Syndrome wasn't so lucky. His cape got tangled in the jet's turbine, causing the plane to explode. The Incredible had seen Syndrome for the last time. But it was not the last time the Incredibles would face danger. From now on, they wouldn't have to hide their powers at least not all the time.